Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. We're again visiting our Toshiba 4000 CDS laptop. Well, the parts that is, because the goal of this video is to put everything back together. I was planning on releasing this a little bit earlier, but then COVID-19 hit in our household here and the three of us were isolating at home with flu-like symptoms, so I didn't feel like... Uh, you know doing another video but here it is so let's get started now a couple of people on the last video commented on the amount of screws that this laptop has now luckily these are all Phillips screws but there are different sizes both in diameter and in overall length of the screws so it's best to keep everything organized so that you are able to find the correct screw very easily as you are putting things back together now, uh, there is a service manual for this Toshiba laptop, so that will help, but it doesn't cover everything, but it is pretty straightforward in finding out what kind of screws are needed. Now, if you wanna know the size of the screws, I highly recommend a tool like this that can very precisely measure not only the length of the screw, which is basically not including the, the head of the screw, but it can also measure the diameter uh, very precisely. So this is a 2.5 millimeter screw. You can just you know slide it on in here. And then I just made a little piece of paper with the various sizes that came with this laptop. And then I put in an example of every screw and that makes it pretty convenient to find the correct screws again. But now, before we put everything back together again, we need to do some cleaning. And, you know, the various plastics of this laptop were impacted by the battery leakage or there was also some liquid um, spillage uh, on the LCD screen. So I decided to just submerge everything uh, in vinegar just to make sure that the, the battery stuff gets uh, neutralized. And I put everything in this big plastic uh, container here. I tilted it a little bit so that everything was, was properly submerged. And I'll just left it there for 24 hours just to make sure that the majority of the battery corrosion was removed from the plastics. Now I was using standard vinegar for that. I have a small bottle and a big bottle both of them are seven percent acidity as with most vinegars and that's typically good for cleaning up this type of stuff now beware of concrete floors as i did spill some on my basement floor and you can see that it left quite of a stain uh, on the floor which is just impossible to remove so yeah next thing i did was took all of the plastics and rinsed them and then used some soapy water to clean everything properly. Now you're never gonna get these plastics back into their original state. I mean, um, the battery leakage was definitely there and you can definitely get rid of the, the markings, but yeah, some of the stains will just stay. Stuff like this can be easily removed, like the mouse uh, buttons here. Uh, that can be cleaned off very easily just using soapy water. But yeah, overall, I was pretty happy with the result, I have to say. I mean, the laptop definitely looked a lot better. A lot of the corrosion was gone. And yeah, definitely, definitely good. The hinges here, they also contained this kind of uh, corrosion. So I just submerged them into a bottle of vinegar. Also left it there for a couple of hours. And... Uh, you know, at first glance, you don't really see it doing much, but after a couple of hours, you see that most of the, the rust here or the corrosion is removed from these hinges here. And then just using a toothbrush, you can kind of finish it off and just uh, clean it up a bit. So yeah, all in all, pretty happy with the result. It's not 100% clean, but it's definitely a lot better than it was initially. I just think it's cool to kind of look at how the vinegar is attaching itself to the metal and just attacking that that rust. Now onto the PCB where we still have a lot of battery corrosion here on these connectors. So I'm just using a toothbrush with some vinegar to, to cover the PCB and just kind of brush it off. You can see that the vinegar is doing its thing. It's trying to remove as much of that battery corrosion as possible. 
What you do need to take into account, obviously, is that you need to use some isopropyl alcohol to remove everything because uh, the, the vinegar and the fact that this PCB was a little bit dirty means that a lot of residue will be left over. So it definitely requires uh, one or two additional rinses of isopropyl alcohol just to make sure that everything stays nice and clean be fooled by the PCB while it's still in a wet condition because you will only see the actual condition of the PCB when everything is dried up and as you can see here there is still some residue on the PCB. So in that case you just take your toothbrush again, apply some isopropyl alcohol, try to rub everything as well as possible and then just take your time to uh, have everything dry up and see what the condition of the PCB will be. I'm just going to fast forward some footage here as you can actually see the isopropyl alcohol drying up from the PCB. So as it is um, kind of evaporating from the PCB, you can clearly see the difference between the wet part and the dry part. And you know, as you can see, after a couple of rinses, it came out pretty nicely. So yeah, like I already mentioned, the plastics, you're never going to get this into mint condition again. At least the battery corrosion is gone. And you might be able to clean this up a little bit more, but I didn't want to put too much effort into this. I mean, this is an old laptop. I don't know if I'm actually going to be still be using the laptop. So I think the best you can do is just get rid of that battery corrosion and make sure that you know you get it as clean as possible on the exterior obviously it still has a scratch here and there so yeah you just have to live with that it is an old laptop but definitely looks a lot better than it did originally now looking at the motherboard there are two pieces that we still need to assemble one is the PCMCIA uh, slot adapter and the other is the CPU board which uses these two connectors here on the left uh, has some additional memory chips on here as well and the thing is that uh, this one contains the the screw that got kind of completely destroyed I tried a bunch of things to get the screw uh, out of here I used the rubber band technique it's definitely a Phillips screw because the opposing screw is a Phillips screw so yeah I have no idea um, why it got uh, screwed up like this so I tried the rubber band technique but perhaps there's something wrong with my technique I tried a big rubber band like this one but also a smaller one I tried different bit sizes but just couldn't get the screw out uh, also read somewhere if a screw is that far gone then this technique will simply not work I didn't feel like using a drill or a dremel to to drill it out uh, there's very little space to work with here and perhaps using super glue or something might help but yeah it's probably gonna be another video because I was feeling pretty sick and I didn't want to bother with it so yeah we need to attach this little frame here and then we can put the CPU cover uh, onto the motherboard using three screws we can screw it to the frame and then I like to do just a quick test just to make sure that the laptop is working. I try to do that on a regular basis as I am assembling things because if everything is assembled and then you find out that the thing is not working, that's just, you know, far from ideal. So I think it's best to work in incremental steps. Here I'm going to be adding the, the cooler, which is attached here using two screws. Um, this is a fan that doesn't turn on uh, automatically uh, when you boot the computer so I don't know what the exact condition is for having this thing turned on. Here we have the PCMCIA card adapter which also slots into this connector here. And then the motherboard is ready to be put into the plastic housing. Before I do that, I'm just going to be attaching these four screws here to hold the PCMCIA uh, adapter uh, firmly in place. And then we can slide it right on in. Just need to take into account that this PCMCIA eject button here needs to slide in. Then it just needs to drop into place like so. 
And there are these little markers here that will help you guide the PCB in so that it's properly aligned with the screws. There are a couple of markers like that. We also have to assemble this little metal bracket here, put everything in place. And then there are just two screws that you need to screw here on the motherboard. The rest is handled by the other components. We can also slide in the optical drive, which goes in here. We have the uh, 1.44 megabyte disk drive, which goes into here. We have a little cover here and then the PCB for the two mouse buttons, which goes in like so. And then a little PCB for some LEDs. And then it's just a matter of hooking up all of the little flex cables here. They're all different connectors with different mechanisms of attaching the flex cables to the PCB. So just be very careful with them. At this point, we can also attach our hard drive because the next test will involve booting the computer with an actual hard drive. Again, it's something that you need to do on a regular basis as you are assembling the computer because you never know when you might did some kind of screw up. So here with the hard drive installed, we can already boot the laptop just by attaching an external monitor, an external uh, keyboard, and just see if it will boot into uh, Windows, into the operating system. Okay, so we're making progress, or are we? No, because I forgot to put this freaking thing into the plastic housing. And obviously this needs to go in first before you put in the motherboard, before you put in the optical drive, the disk drive, all of the connectors. So I had to redo all of that just to get this thing in. Now the bracket itself is used to kind of guide the optical drive here and also provide some extra mounting holes for the motherboard and just adds to the overall stiffness of the chassis, I think. So yeah, it's definitely needed and it's a bit of a shame that I forgot about it. Here uh, you can see me doing some measurements on the, uh, on the CPU fan. Uh, so as you can see, the, both of the pads here on this connector measure 5 volts. So as there is no you know, potential difference between the two connectors, the fan will not start. So this is obviously something which is done uh, through software. So yeah, here there are three additional screws that we can use to uh, attach the motherboard. The other screws are left open because they will be... Um, coming through the plastic top cover because there are some screw holes here so that will put that into place and then you know from the other side from the bottom of the laptop you also have a couple of longer screws that uh, bite into these uh, holes there so we also got this plastic cover that we can put here just to protect the PCB and the various connectors and then it's off to the LCD screen, which is, besides the fact that it's pretty dirty, uh, you can also see that there was some uh, liquid uh, spill uh, that occurred on this laptop because this part of the LCD is also heavily corroded. Now this is a sharp panel, uh, cold cathode fluorescent lamp LCD panel, so definitely not an active TFT, but a DSTN um, panel which is, you know, not good. It's definitely not good for, for gaming. It has, you know, very poor contrast, but I'm just gonna be cleaning it a little bit, going to get rid of the corrosion as much as possible using some vinegar, just using a toothbrush to go over everything and then using some IPA to clean it up. And you can get most of the stuff uh, cleaned up like that. I mean, it looked pretty okay. Um, there is still some corrosion markings here. I didn't clean it 100%, uh, but I mean, definitely looks a lot better than it did when I uh, received the laptop. So yeah, the LCD panel goes into this plastic section here. There are four screws, four mounting holes to hold the LCD in place. But before we can put it in there, we need to prepare some cables. Here we have the main LCD cable, which also has this contrast uh, control knob. We also have a cable for the high voltage section here, which also needs to be powered uh, via the motherboard connector. 
So it's just a matter of putting these cables in a somewhat logical order. So they all need to go through these little uh, compartments here where the hinges will be placed. So yeah, it's a pretty tight fit, but just need to make sure that everything is aligned properly. Here we have the LCD panel connector. So there's also a little PCB here on the LCD panel. So those need to be connected. But we can't put the LCD panel in just yet because the first thing we need to do now is to put in these hinges. Now the two hinges need to go on this piece of plastic here because they need to extrude these two little compartments here. So there's one specifically for the left and one for the right, which are you know, different shapes. So I'm just going to be starting with this one here on the right. So you just need to uh, put it through this hole here at a certain angle and then you can kind of clip it onto the side here like so. The one on the left is a little bit bigger but yeah, it's the same mechanism. You just need to find like the correct angle to put it through and then just slide it onto the, to the edge of the plastic here. So I've positioned the hinges at an 180 degree angle because I want to mount the hinges now to the plastic. On one side, we have this uh, metal frame here that we can uh, put, which Kind of makes everything a little bit sturdier and makes sure that the hinge is properly connected to the plastic on the other side we don't have that we can also attach the speakers now so we have this rubber band the speaker itself and then just a little frame here to attach the speaker there are also some metal clips here and there And now that we have the, the hinges properly uh, attached to the plastics, we can um, join the two bits of plastic uh, right here. And we're going to be using the hinges now to attach everything. Just need to make sure that the cables are properly routed before we start attaching the two uh, plastic parts here. And this was, I think, the most complex part of the build. I mean, everything comes together here. You have the hinges, you have the, the cables that need to be routed properly. But as soon as that is done and the cables are properly routed, you can start attaching the hinges to the top plastic part. And then, you know, the most difficult job is done. What we can do now is finally attach the LCD panel to the top section hook up the LCD cable here and everything should just fall right into place. The panel itself is held on by four screws so we can attach those as well. One other thing I wanted to show you here besides this PC speaker, we have this uh, metallic uh, thing here which is actually used to put the computer in sleep mode when you put the lid down. But unfortunately, for some reason, I think I have lost the little push button that goes in there. And then we can do some cable management. Now, because we have already routed the cables through the, the hinges there, a lot of the work has already been done. We have a couple of plastic bits here that we can use to, to set the cables in place. A couple of them were broken, so I wasn't able to reuse all of them. So, um, for example, this middle one here, I wasn't able to use this one here also got a little bit broken, but did decide to use it anyway, because it provides a nice path for this cable here. And then once everything is done, we can very gently pull everything down so that it kind of resembles a laptop. <laughs> and um, we can start by hooking up the high voltage section of the LCD here the right hand speaker. Here we have the LCD panel connector and the left speaker. Now is again a good time to see if everything is still working because now we don't need an external monitor but we can verify if the LCD panel is working. Now make sure that the contrast knob is set in the right position. And as you can see here, in touch with tomorrow Toshiba, everything seems to be working. So that's really good. 
Now that we know that everything is working, we can kind of clip down the top part here to the bottom part of the laptop. Now there are various clips on all sides of the laptop here, so we just need to push everything right on down. Make sure everything is properly secured using four screws. And then we can put the keyboard in. Again, make sure you don't damage the little connector here. Then the keyboard slides right on in. And then we have this plastic rail here that will hold everything in place. On the hinges, we have two metallic parts here that we still need to attach before we attach the top plastic. And we just need to make sure that they align properly because we will be uh, needing a couple of screws here. So let's go ahead and do that. And then it's just a matter of screwing in the two screws. And then the top part of the LCD panel should be properly assembled. The only thing that we still need to do is kind of hide away these little screws here. And for that, we have these little plastic covers, one that uh, includes the model name of the machine and the other, which is just a blank strip of plastic. Might need to glue them on there just to make sure that they don't fall off again. We have the same on the side here. Now, I don't really know how to get these completely flush like they were when they were coming out of the factory. So might need to see how I can improve that a little bit. But yeah, it's not really mandatory for this uh, computer. I mean, if the screws were visible, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And yeah, with that, we're reaching the end of this assembly. Two more screws here on the back to make sure that the top uh, cover is firmly attached. And then on the bottom, we have the hard drive cover that we can put in there. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven big screws here that we need to screw in. And two smaller ones here on the battery compartment, one of which I seem to have forgotten here. Now on the main battery, there was also some corrosion and what appeared to be some kind of bulge here in the plastic, although it was completely flush, it just looks like it is kind of bulged, but it's not. And I'm not really sure if this corrosion is coming from this main battery or if this was a result of the other battery leakage, which was internal in the laptop. So everything cleaned up pretty nicely and the battery was still working on this machine. So just slides in like so. Just need to open it here and then close it up again. And with that, my friends, our Toshiba S4000 CDS is completely assembled. Now this one uses a 15 volt power supply. Now Toshiba has a various 15 volt power supplies. I have a three amp model and a two amp model, it just uses a standard DC power jack. Um, the difference between the two power supplies here is that one of them is a three amp model and the other one is a two amp model. So model number model number is here, the PA2450U and the PA2440U, uh, two amp and three amp. The main difference between the two uses a standard power plug like this one. So yeah, always nice to have. And for those who are interested in the kind of parts that were left out, there, so there were four screws in total, one of which, which is already accounted for that didn't make it back into the laptop and some various pieces of plastic that got broken off. One of these plastics here is for the, for guiding the cables um, that are coming from the LCD panel. So yeah, they're not really necessary. So it's a bit unfortunate that they broke. But yeah, all in all, I was able to get the machine back together again. The machine is still working. Everything seems to be working. I can boot into an operating system. The disk drive is working. The optical drive is working. LCD panel is working. So yeah, it's not the best laptop. It has a horrible screen, but it was a nice experience to kind of disassemble the entire thing like I did in the previous video and just put everything back together again. So as far as actual usage of this laptop, I mean, it has a very horrible screen. So it's definitely not um, 
capable of doing any type of gaming. I mean, you could attach it to an external monitor and then have this kind of really compact retro system. But then again, the video card in this laptop isn't the most powerful one, so you would be limited to running in, you know, non-3D accelerated games. But overall, I mean, I like the look and feel of these Toshibas. I thought it was kind of fun to, to do a complete teardown and build it up again. Um, so yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm not really sure if I'm going to do another video on this laptop. Perhaps I'll just do a quick comparison with, an, with the CDT model, which contains an active TFT panel, just to show you guys a difference. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. That would really help out a lot. And I hope to see you guys really soon in the next video, which will probably not be laptop related, but you know, still lots of cool retro stuff to go through here on the channel. So yeah, take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy. And I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.